His shop is in the center of Paris, Pierre Cardin. He's been a designer for more than 60 years, 60 years, and he's never stopped challenging convention. Yeah, this might look better if I were French. Anyway, I didn't really come to buy anything, but to meet Monsieur Cardin himself. He'll be 90 this year, and his office is just upstairs. But look my room. Today it was clean, now look my office. It's not really messy, it's, it's filled with memories. Easy. He's been celebrated. The Time magazine. Yes, I see. He's known everybody. Mm. Jacqueline Kennedy. This is with Fidel Castro when I was in Cuba. I'm just looking. And he was commissioned by the Beatles to design these suits. This is Pierre Cardin. His creations alone would have made him famous, but as a young designer, he took on the titans of French couture and changed the entire industry. But I'll come back to that, because now, nearly 90, he can't stop working. Today is more fancy. Last fall, he presented a new collection. My new hotel. You're doing a hotel? He's published a magazine, had oh, foreign oh, literature translated to French. I make so many things, you know, in my life, so many. Given millions to promote young <laughs> artists, yeah, and when France same, awarded him its highest teacher. honor, and Pierre he designed his own sword. <laughs> I drew myself. Yes. When I was uh, finished, one thing very well, I start sometimes seeing. I don't like stop. I like to come to prove myself. I'm a gamble, you know. Merci. He threw this party last year at Maxime's, one of the oldest and most famous restaurants in Paris. 30 years ago, when the original owners told him they wanted to sell, he bought it. In one day, I decided, one day, because a lot of millions, you know. A lot. He was actually born in Italy, Pietro Cardin. I was born in this window. His family came to France when he was just two. He entered the business when I was 14. By the 1960s, Cardin has a he was everywhere. His designs defined the decade. Just ask the executive fashion and beauty editor of Harper's Bazaar, Avril Graham. See, when I look at a dress like this, um, I think it screams what Pierre Cardin was about in the 60s. Uh, his love of geometric patterns, circles, that sort of space age avant-garde that he was so famous for, and that very sort of futuristic dabbling with materials that were perhaps non-traditional, vinyls and PVCs and man-made fabrics. Because uh, fashion must to be tomorrow for me. What is a fashion tomorrow, not yesterday? Because my fashion is very young in any case. Yes. Some dress can not wear in by an old lady, you know, I don't think ridiculous. So. Yes. But his career really began when he went to work for the man who would become his mentor, Christian Dior. I know a little bit the fashion, but you help me. What it is elegant, what it is a tradition in the same time. Dior was more classic than myself. You know? Yes. Within a few years, Dior helped Cardin establish his own house. He was barely 30. You know, he just didn't suddenly arrive in the universe in the 1960s and, and go into that whole futuristic mode. Uh, his first collection that he ever, ever showed was in 1951. Finally, Pierre Cardin. This is a man who had honed his craft since the early days. He understood the expert tailoring. He was an apprentice for a tailor. That was his very first job. <laughs> okay, but buying a jacket this way, finding something you like that's about your size, this is called prêt-à-porter. It means ready to wear. It's affordable, everyday elegance. And today, it's how millions of people can buy designer clothes. But designers in the 50s catered to the super rich. Theirs was the world of haute couture, fashion for red carpets and state dinners, each piece handmade the fabric, stitching, and embroidery unique. This is a very elitist profession. You know, Paris haute couture, mm -hmm. Paris design, creme de la creme. It's just that haute couture is so labor intensive that designers lost money on every piece. So in 1959, he broke ranks and gambled his career by selling his collection in a department store. This was the turning point. To the old guard, it was an outrage. But Cardin made millions, and other designers soon got the message. 
Now every designer shows at a department store. Always, I was always successful. He had helped change the business of fashion forever. But many of his critics feel he went too far when he began to license his name. Other manufacturers put it on things like T-shirts, ties, baby buggies, and... Pencils or pens or key fobs, whatever. Do you see fashion as, a, as an art or a business? Both. Everything is business. Your picture is business. If you don't sell your picture, you are no one, no you. This is my last glass. There's no question that he really has sure. has a, a lasting historical legacy. <laughs> Profound. He was definitely part of a movement. There's no question. If I think you look at something like this, for example, and we can see familiar references even in today's market. I'm fancy. I'm fancy boy. <laughs> yes. I'm not classic at all, no. If I was classic, I... I don't have so many risks, you know, in my life. So whether you think he's high fashion or low brow, Pierre Cardin is the man who made elegance affordable. He's extraordinary, yes. Voila.